Yeah, it looks like 0.5. Looks like one half. I would agree. So, oops, it was one half. Yeah, it was a possibility. And we'll get way more specific with these. But for now, as long as you got within the ballpark. And here in just a minute, we'll get more specific with these. Okay, so this is what we just did. What can we do to verify that they are, in fact, roots of the function? So the ones that we think um, are the actual real rational root, sorry, we have negative 3, negative 2 thirds, and we decided 1 half was a little closer. What we can do is we can divide that original equation, which is right here. We can divide that original equation by the root negative three. If it is an actual root, which we are pretty sure about that one, but if it is, what will my remainder be? Zero. So I bring down the six, even though this stuff goes away. Bring down the 6, multiply, get negative 18. Add those, you get 1. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Add those, you get negative 2. Multiply those, you get 6. Sure enough, I get 0. Question real quick. Why didn't I change the sign of that? That's the root. Yeah, that is the root. We only change the sign when it's a factor. So like the factor would have been x plus 3, and we'd set that equal to 0, and then we'd get the root. So it's not that we're just changing the sign, we're finding the root. Okay, now we are for sure that that one's there, which we were pretty sure anyway. But now I can take this and put the variables by it, x squared plus x minus 2, and factor that and see if I get these other two. So remember to do this. We have a number in front that's not a one. So I have to do the long no fuss method. First number goes here, last number goes at the end. We need two numbers that multiply to give us negative 12 but the add to equal positive 1. Yeah. So positive 4x and negative 3x. It really doesn't matter what order you put them in. It'll work out the same either way. So we can factor out a 2x here, leaving us with 3x plus 2. And we can factor out a negative 1 here, also leaving us with 3x plus 2. That's how we know we did it right. So the 3x plus 2 can come out, leaving us with 2x minus 1. Those are factors. How do we find the roots? Yeah, set them equal to 0. One half, x is negative two thirds, which is exactly what we thought. But now we verified it and we know for sure. And if we hadn't have noticed how oh, that's closer to one half than two thirds, we would have figured it out right then. So it's not a big deal. So our picture verifies our work. And our work basically corrects our guesstimates from the picture. All right, so we're going to do 
that a few more times. Just get the swing of it. Figure out how we're doing this so that when you do it at home, hopefully, you won't look at it and just go, what? Okay, so we're going to use the rational root theorem to determine the rational roots. So that's the putting your p's over your q's for each of the functions below. And then use synthetic division to verify that they are, in fact, roots. So we will use our graphing calculator instead of, remember, you probably had to keep plugging in one until you found one that worked. We'll use our graphing calculator to get an estimate, and then we'll just verify it with the math. So we still are going to have to be able to do the math, but at least we won't have to try a bunch of ones that don't actually work. Okay, so we would start by putting our P's over our Q's. So plus or minus um, factors of the 10. So we have 1, what else? 2, 5, and 10. That's it. And then on bottom, Plus or minus 6, so it's the same ones we had earlier. So I'm going to write that. That's our P's over our Q's. Our P's come from the factor of the constant. The Q's come from the factor of our leading coefficient. So then we actually put each number on top over each number on bottom. And I like to pick a number at a time. So like I'm going to do one over all of them, then I'm going to do two, then I'm going to do five, and so on. So you go ahead, and I'll go ahead and just kind of double check with me as you're doing it. I got one, one half, one third, one sixth. So plus or minus is in front of all of them. Now I'm going to do the two. And I got two and two thirds because the other ones have already been there. One, five. Over six is five thirds, so it's ten. So there's all the possibles, and that's something that you'd be asked to do. See on a test, possibly a free response question. You know, it's to list all the possible rational roots. So you need to know how to do that. And now we're gonna graph it. It doesn't say anywhere on here that we actually have to um, do a picture of it or draw it or anything. We're just using it to figure out where we want to start. Yeah. Oh. Move it over here. So maybe there's not a flare. Oh, they're still there. So, does it look like any of them is a whole number that it passes through? Two. 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 Is this what your picture looks like? If not, I can look at it. No big deal. 
and make sure that it crossed here too. And then we can look at it. Okay. So two is a great place to start. So I put two in the box. And then I have six, one, negative 31, 10. Two times six is 12, times eight. Two times 13 is 26, times eight. Two times negative five is negative 10. Sure enough, it's working. So 6x squared plus 13x minus 5. So use the long no plus method. Two numbers that multiply to give me negative 30x squared. Put the add to give me 13x. 15 minus 5. Absolutely. And the other x is fine because it's the longer no plus method. Because that first number is not a 1. So we have plus 15x and negative 2x. So I'm going to factor out, looks like a 3x. Leaves me with 2x plus 5 and a negative 1, also leaving us with 2x plus 5. And we're going to put those two factors. Set them equal to zero to get the roots. Negative five over two. And 